hello to my first ever YouTube video and this is gonna be... I hope it's not too loud in here. Maybe I should close the window. Welcome to my first ever YouTube video. This is gonna be a sewing tutorial for the Leia dress. like the perfect summer dress. I make it with linen fabrics and I would also recommend using linen just because it looks so beautiful. But if you want to use any other fabric, of course, feel free to do so. And I thought it's easiest if I make a YouTube video for the sewing tutorial just because when I learned how to sew, I really loved watching YouTube videos. And you can just watch this video, press pause, repeat the step I just did, and then we can make our layer dresses together. And if you have any questions, just leave a comment and then I can make a YouTube short video or another YouTube video where I can like go in depth to the steps that maybe I did too fast. And also I thought I'm going to tell you a bit about myself. My name is Anne-Sophie or most people call me Sophie. And I'm German but I was living in Barcelona for the last six years. And I started sewing during lockdown because I used to work as a flight attendant, but then COVID hit, I didn't have so many flights anymore, and then I got my mom's old sewing machine out. And I just started sewing just to keep me busy. But then so quickly, I just, I loved it so much. Like I spent morning to night behind my mom's sewing machine, watching so many YouTube videos, teaching myself so much. And then I also pretty quickly taught myself how to draft my own patterns. And I did some online courses for that. And then a few months later, I was wearing my own designs and people on the streets would stop me and ask me where my dress was from. And it never happened to me before that people would stop me on the street asking where something that I was wearing was from. And then it's the best compliment when you wear something that you made yourself. Um, and then slowly I started dreaming about what it would be like having my own made to order brand. And there were some brands that I followed. There's like this one French brand called Maison Cleo, which is, I think the biggest made-to-order brand and before I've heard of them, I never heard of made-to-order brands. Like I didn't even know that it was an option. Um, but yeah, they inspired me so much and that really showed me that you don't need to have... Like you, I, like I love sewing so I didn't want to get a manufacturer, like I really wanted to sew the pieces that people would order. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in, my, in that story of how I started my brand, um, I can make another video to that, but now we should skip to the sewing tutorial. Once you have printed out everything that you need to print out and have glued everything together, you should have the back of the skirt, the sleeves, the straps that are going to go like this, the front of the dress and then the inside like the lining of the dress. And then there's also going to be another pattern piece for the straps where you can make a bow in the back, but I have, I can't find it. Like I just moved to Australia and I must have lost it somewhere, but we don't need it because I know how long it needs to be, but you have the pattern piece. So you're all good. And I'm going to show you which fabric I'm using. I'm using this sand beige linen fabric and I love this fabric. It's so soft, it's already pre-washed and I would really recommend washing your linen before you use it because it's gonna shrink um, the first time you wash it. And you need to cut out the sleeve twice. This you need to cut out four times. The back of the skirt you need to cut out once on fold. And these two pieces you also need to cut out once on fold. And I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. So unfold means that the fabric you just fold it, here's, it's open here and here it's folded and then you take your pattern piece and where it says fold you lay it on the fold and then either you can use chalk to trace it or you can pin it and then you need to cut it out. So this is going to be the skirt, that's what it looked like when it was folded, like the pattern piece and then you open it and you have the back of the dress. Once I've cut out the pattern piece I always like to 
put them together and lay them on the side just to make sure at the end I still know which fabric piece is what. I mean with this dress it's pretty obvious because you can really tell what's the sleeve, what's the front, but yeah, just a little tip. Yeah, I'm gonna show you how I cut out the pattern piece if there's a dart. So I'm gonna pin the piece to the fabric and because here it says fold, the fabric is on fold. And then I put a needle in here in the very corner and now I'm gonna cut out the pattern piece. Don't cut this part out. I just always cut the, the paper out just because it's easier to put the needle in here. So I'm gonna cut along here and I'm putting a little notch, like a little clip with the scissors in here. So here's again how I mean it. I've cut it out and now I'm just gonna go in here and make a little notch. And here we have the front and here again we have a dart here so I put the needle in here and then I'm gonna make two little notches in here and make sure that you don't cut in too deep like try to make it half a centimeter and then another notch you need to make right here because this is where the skirt is gonna start like the back of the skirt we're gonna attach it from here downwards and because we need to cut out the sleeve twice instead of cutting it out two times I'm just folding the fabric and then cutting it out once and then at the end I still have it two times so I folded the fabric down and I put the sewing pattern on top, pinned it, cut it out and then we have two sleeves. And just to make sure that we all have the same amount of pieces cut out, we need two times the sleeves, one time the front, one time the front lining, four times the straps, one time the back and then two times long straps where we tie it in the back and make a bow. The first thing we need to do is we take the long straps and we need to iron it before we sew it and at the end it's gonna look like this. So first we're gonna take it and then fold it in half and iron it. The next step is, is that we're gonna open it again and then we fold this part towards the middle and iron it and then we're gonna do the same to the other side. It's gonna look like this once it's ironed. Next up we fold this together again and iron it once again. Now it's looking like this. One last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take one of the ends and we're gonna open it up and fold it in around one centimeter and then close it again because then we have a really nice um, finished edge and I'm gonna iron over it just one more time and here is what it looks like here this is gonna be the end that we see as you can see I hope it's focusing it's a super nice clean edge like this and next step what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a top stitch and we're gonna start here at the, at the finished clean edge go over here back and forth and then all the way down So here you can see again we're starting where we folded the fabric inside. Next up we're gonna sew the straps that are gonna be right here at the end and to do so we're gonna need two cut out fabric pieces lay them on top of each other and I'm gonna flip the camera and show you 
what to do next. Okay, so once again we have two pieces of fabric and here we have one of the long straps that we have just sewn and out here is the finished edge where we folded the fabric inside and here at the cut off corner here you can see the difference like this is a sharp corner I guess <laughs> and this is the cut off corner so we're gonna lay this piece like the long strap with a not so nice finished edge in the cut off corner and then we're gonna pin everything in place and then we're gonna start sewing from down here along here we sew in the strap and I would recommend going back and forth a few times just to make sure the strap is really secure and along here and then we finish so which means we're gonna leave this part open We're repeating this step now again because at the end we need it twice. So once again we lay two of the pieces together, stick a few pins in it, we take one of the long straps that we have now left, the raw edge that is not so nice looking, we pin in between the cut off corner. Put a needle in it and then I'm gonna add a couple more pins and then once again it's gonna look like this and we're gonna sew along here go back and forth a few times until here And now once we're finished, we're gonna just pull on the strap here, flip it inside out, so the right side is facing out. And now we go over to the iron and just press the seams open, um, just so it looks nicely. But at the end, it's gonna look like this, and it will be over here, this one on this side. Woo, we're getting there. Next step is sewing the darts and as you remember we put a little notch here and down here and we stuck the needle inside and now we're gonna put another needle over here like exactly at the right spot at the same spot and it's gonna look like this and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna lay fold it and I hope you can see it that here the two cuts clips that we made line up and then we're gonna sew the dart and as you've just seen at the beginning I did a back stitch but over here I did not because what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna get pull the threads apart and then we're gonna make three knots one two three and we're gonna leave around one and a half centimeters left and cut the rest off. And now we're gonna do the same over here. Okay, so I just ironed it. And when you iron it, you wanna um, iron this part down as well as here. 
and this is what the good side looks like. The next step now is we take again the lining from the front part here and we need to overlock the end. We need to overlock this part and if you don't have an overlock machine, no problem, you can just use your normal sewing machine, go in the zigzag stitch option and do a zigzag stitch and we're just doing this so the fabric doesn't fray. Now we're gonna do the same that we did to the lining from the front. We're gonna do it to the main part of the front of the dress. So again, here we have the needle and then we're gonna line up our little notches that we made, place it on the, the sewing machine right where the needle is, put the, oops, put the needle down, and then we front and back stitch, and then we're gonna sew until we arrive at this point here. So now we put the front of the dress on the table in front of us and we want the good side facing us, which means here the stitches of the dart are going to be facing the table and then we're going to take our straps and we're going to line them up with the edge here and we're going to do the same on the other side and make sure that the clean sewed edge is towards the center and the raw unsewn edge is facing outwards. And then we're taking the lining and once again we want the good sides facing each other so this time here the seam has to look towards us and we're going to place it on top and now I'd, I would recommend pinning it here like the v-neck right in the center put a needle and just put needles all around it And next up we're just gonna sew along here, down here, up here and here. So everywhere where you see needles we're gonna sew. Now we need to make a little cut here at the middle of the v-neck just because it's gonna look cleaner when we open it up. Just cut out a little V so we have less fabric built up in here and next up we're gonna flip this open and now we're gonna do a top stitch but we're only gonna do a top stitch here so not here where the straps are just here and we're gonna do the top stitch on the lining I'm gonna show you okay to do the top stitching part here we have the lining of the front of the dress and we're gonna start a few centimeters down just because it's easier to get started down here and we want to do the stitching close to the edge here close to the um, seam but not on top of the seam just like three millimeters away from it more or less I'm putting the needle down front and back and also I would recommend to sew this part a bit more slowly just because you want it to look very nice And also while you sew I would recommend like pulling the front and back together because we want the seam to open up. And now we do the front and back stitching again. And that's it. Oops, usually I don't want to use a big scissor like this. I would always recommend using little scissors because it happened to me before that I used a big one and then I accidentally cut a hole in the fabric. So always use small scissors. Now we have to go back where we have the bad side facing us because we want to close this part up here and we're just gonna make sure that the seams here are lining up. Put a needle here And 
We're doing the same on the other side. And now all we're going to do is we're going to sew along here and we're going to sew along here. And now I would recommend taking your small scissors and just cutting off all the excess thread just so it looks a bit cleaner like we're gonna overlock it anyway but I just always feel like doing that in between then it looks less chaotic and just yeah the front of the dress is basically finished now so we're gonna put it to the side and now we're gonna do the back of the dress and then once the back of the dress is finished we need to sew the two pieces together okay now we focus on the back of the dress Here's our pattern piece and we need to go over to the iron because what we need to do is we're going to need to fold, well, iron this part down neatly. I'm going to show you how because we want to pull elastic through here. I don't really like sewing in zippers and I just feel like it's much more comfortable wearing a dress or pants that have elastic around the waist. And now we need to iron the top of the skirt of the back of the dress. And make sure it's really the top. You can double check that by folding it down and you can see that this part is much wider and the wider part needs to be at the bottom of the dress. And the shorter section is the waist. And what we're going to do first is first we're just going to fold down like half a centimeter. Just a tiny bit. Just like this. So I would recommend um, to first lay down your elastic in here. Don't iron over it, but just put it down here and then there should really be plenty of room. Like it should not be too tight because you still need to um, make a seam here and the elastic should be able to fit through it easily. So I'm going to fold my fabric down around one and a half to two centimeters. So I'm going to take the elastic away again and then I'm going to start. Next up we're gonna sew on top of here and I want us to sew quite close to the edge. I'm gonna show you. For a size small I would recommend 28 centimeters of elastic for the back of the skirt. But if your waist is a bit more wide or if you just want it to sit even more loose then I would recommend just adding a few more centimeters and also for all the other sizes it's I guess always a better idea to first add a few more centimeters because it's always easier making it more tight than making it more wide um, and especially further along like before we finish up the dress like once we have sewn front and back together we can quite easily open it up again and just make the elastic tighter but yeah for me 28 centimeters and now we need two safety pins to pull it through the loop that we have just made, one in the back and one in the front. Yes, I have two safety pins. Front and back. And now I need to tidy up my mess here again. Those are, by the way, my labels and I'm so happy. Focus. I'm so happy that I can still use them because on all the other labels that I used for different designs it said Solana had me in Barcelona and here it just says Solana so happy days we can reuse them again here in Australia so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna pull the elastic through here through the loop we made yep 
Once we reached it here, once the safety needle and the edge of the elastic has arrived at the edge of the fabric, we can take the safety pin out and then we're just going to go over to the sewing machine and just sew over it a couple of times to make sure it's really secure. Like I really recommend going over it three or four times. And here I'm going to recommend to you to sew really close to the edge. And now it's looking like this. And now we just keep pulling the other end, the other end of the elastic and the safety pin through here. And then once we've gotten to the end of it, we're just making sure, just pull it all apart to make sure the elastic didn't get twisted as we pulled it through. But this is looking good. And now pull it out a bit further, take the safety pin off and always hold it here so it doesn't snap back. And then we're just gonna do the same again. And now the back of the skirt is basically finished. What we have to do next is to sew the front and the back of the dress together. It's important that we put the front of the dress down on the table and the good side is facing us. And to double check what the good side is, you can look here. This is the clean side and the darts that we have sewn is facing the table and the good side of the dress is facing up towards us. And now we need to take the back of the skirt and here where we fold it and iron it down, this is considered the bad side. So we want the good side of the dress to be facing the good side. So good and good together. And the notches we made when we cut out the fabric, we're gonna line it up here, like right where the notch is, where the little cut is that we made. We're gonna attach the skirt and I'm gonna make the first needle and then I'm just gonna pin down. Just like that and we're doing the same on the other side as well lining it up with a little notch here i already sewed one of the sides together and now we're gonna sew the other side together i'm just gonna flip over the dress Now that we have sewn the back of the skirt to the front of the dress, I would recommend that you try it on. So just flip it the other way and try it on. But now we're just trying it on to make sure that the waist is sitting nicely. Um, and now you can still exchange the elastic, either make it a bit more tight or if it's too tight, you can just open the seams up a little bit and put a new elastic through it. And once you've tried it on, we have to go back to the iron because we need to press the seams open and then we're going to overlock it. Next up we have to overlock from here, from under the armpit, all the way along the dress until the end and we do the same on the other side too. We start all the way up here and all the way down the side and again if you don't have an overlock machine you can just use your normal sewing machine on a zigzag option. Step now is to hem the dress. I'm gonna fold mine one and a half centimeters up and then one and a half again but I would recommend that you try your dress on so you can figure out how long you want your dress to be. Maybe you want it to be a bit shorter, maybe you want it to be a bit longer. If you want it to be a bit longer, just make the hem half a centimeter. So fold it up half a centimeter and then half a centimeter again. Or if you want it to be shorter, you can just cut a bit of the fabric off or you just fold it up two centimeters or two and a half or however much you want. And when we have arrived at this part, we're going to fold it towards the front of the dress. So not towards the back, but to the front.
And here again we're gonna fold it to the front. And now we can start sewing and I'm gonna sew quite close to the edge here. I would always recommend starting to sew the hem on the back of the dress just because you're gonna do a little bit of back and front stitching and I think it just looks nicer when it's on the back so you don't see it so much on the front. And I also set up the stitch length a little bit. I'm gonna set mine to three. Now I've put my dress in front of me and the good side is facing me and I'm gonna take one of the sleeves and here as you can see I put a needle inside to remember where the front of the sleeve is and I'm gonna use the front of the sleeve and lay it on top of here where the armhole is or the armpit um, and I'm gonna leave around one and a half to two centimeters and then I'm just gonna start pinning along here. So here as you can see there's one and a half centimeters of the sleeve just hanging over and we just pin along it. Now we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. Again, we're gonna leave around one and a half centimeters from the edge here. And again, remember to use the front of the sleeve. And now we need to sew along here again, but I prefer always starting at the bottom here. So I'm just gonna flip it around now and then I'm gonna start sewing, just doing the same thing. Like I just wanna start from this side and I'm just gonna start sewing along here. Now we have finally attached the sleeves to the dress and what we have to do now is we have to overlock the part that we were sewing. So we're gonna overlock everything that we're sewing, but we're just gonna continue. So we were stopping right here, but we're just gonna continue along here until the end of the sleeves. We're gonna stop here. Next up, you lay the dress on the table again in front of you, the good side facing you, and we're looking at the sleeve here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold the right sides together and we're gonna start pinning down here we're gonna start from the bottom put the first pin in here and then we're gonna go downwards Once we have pinned it all down, we're just doing this to make sure that it's really lining up because sometimes when we're cutting out the fabric, maybe the fabric has moved a bit. We're just making sure it fits perfectly. And now I'm gonna take the bottom two pins out again because what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna go over to the overlock machine and overlock the edge of the sleeve. And we're gonna do the same with the other side. So here I already checked, it's lining up perfectly. Here we do the same again good side is facing us. We're gonna fold it in half and start on top here and just pin down. Yeah, Here it's also perfectly so I'm gonna take this needle out again and I'm gonna go over to the overlock machine and overlock all this. I'm just gonna take two pins again and pin it all the way down because next up we're gonna close the sleeve. So now I have the two pins that I took out earlier back in again and now we're gonna go back to our normal sewing machine and we're just gonna sew along here. And we're gonna do the same on the other side here. 
And here it doesn't matter if you start from up here and go down or if you start from down here. I'm just gonna start from down here now. So now that we have closed the side of the sleeve, we're just going to go back to the overlock machine and overlock both sides again. I'm now going to show you how I'm hiding away these bits. And to do so I'm using a needle that's not very sharp and it's a bit bigger than normal needles and it has quite a big hole. And it's really hard putting it into words, so I guess it's just best if you watch me. First I'm pulling it through here. And then I just pull it out. So it's hidden in here and now I can cut the rest off. And I'm doing the same thing at the top of the sleeve. Going through here, pushing it out, then I'm pulling it through the little hole of the needle, pulling it out and now I can cut the rest of it off. Next up we're gonna take the edge of the sleeve and we're gonna fold it one and a half centimeters up or at least for me it's one and a half centimeters because my elastic is one centimeter wide so I would recommend folding it half centimeter more up than what your elastic is wide. Um, I guess you're using the same elastic that you also used for the back of your skirt. So we're just going to pin it all around. Now that we have pinned all the way around it, we're going to start sewing and we're going to sew pretty close to the edge. Only thing is we're going to start right here, but we're going to finish around four centimeters before where we started because we need to leave this part open because we still need to put the pull the elastic through. Remember to stop now because here's where we started and we need to lift this part open. And now we go ahead and do the exact same thing to our other sleeve again. Now we need to figure out how long the elastic needs to be that we're gonna put in the sleeve. And I would recommend just taking measuring tape to measure the middle part of your upper arm. And you should still be able to move it around just a bit. And I'm measuring 27 centimeters. So I'm gonna cut off 27 centimeters and we're not gonna add any more seam allowance because we really want the elastic to sit tight, but of course not too tight. So. I would just recommend using the measurement of your upper arm but if you're unsure it's always easiest to maybe add a few more centimeters and then it's easy to make it tighter afterwards so I'm gonna cut two times 27 centimeters of elastic. Now we need our two safety pins again and I'm gonna put one safety pin at each end and this one I'm just gonna put to the side for now and now I'm starting with one of the sleeves and I'm just going to go through the hole that we left and I'm just going to slowly start pulling it through. 
and you just need to be careful that this is also not going in but in case it does go in you can just pull it out with a safety pin on the other side again. And now make sure again that the elastic didn't get twisted, otherwise it's not going to sit very nicely around your arm. And then you take the safety pins off and now we layer them on top of each other just so it's one round um, piece of elastic without any twists in it. And I'm layering one centimeter. I'm putting one centimeter on top of the other centimeter <laughs> and I'm putting a needle through it and now I'm going, going over to my sewing machine and I'm going to go back and forth maybe four or five times to make sure it's really safe. Here's what it's looking like now and just cut off the excess thread. Now I just pulled this a bit apart just so the elastic is going all in again and now we're going back to the sewing machine and we're just gonna close the hole we left here, the little gap. And now we can flip the sleeve so the right side is out and it's gonna look like this. And now we're gonna do the same thing to the other sleeve and I'm just gonna film it again just in case. We're almost finished, we just have to do one more step. So now we're gonna, well first I think you should also see if, just put your arm through the elastic and see how it feels, like if it's too tight or if it's too loose and now we can go back and change it if you need to. But for me, taking the measurement of my biceps worked perfectly, so it will for you too. What we need to do now is to finish the back of the sleeve and now you can still just see the overlocked edge and we're just gonna fold it in once and do a top stitch to make it disappear. I'm gonna show it to you again what we have to do just to make sure you understand so it's more clear. This is the front of the sleeve and it's looking all nice and the back we... oh no those were my needles. Um, now we have to finish the back of the sleeve so it looks a bit nicer because right now we still just see the, the overlocked edge. What we're gonna do is for the right sleeve we're gonna turn it the bad side facing us and then we're gonna start sewing from just up here. We're gonna go back and forth and then we're just gonna fold the overlock edge in and then we're just gonna sew along it just all the way down until we finish it down here.
So this is now what the back of the sleeve looks like. I'm so glad I decided to use white thread so you can really see it. We started from up here and now it's looking, looking nice and clear and especially if you used sewing thread matching your fabric it's gonna look so beautiful. And now we have to do the exact same thing to the left sleeve and this time I'm recommending you that instead of starting at the top we're gonna start, start, <laughs> start at the bottom here. So this is the left sleeve and this time if we turn it, if I turn the back of the dress towards you, on the right side we started to sew from the top here but this time we're gonna start from the bottom. We are finally finished with our layer dress now. The only thing you have to do now is go ahead and iron it. And I would love to see you wearing it. So if you're wearing your layer dress, please take a photo, post it on Instagram, send it to me on Instagram, or tag me in your videos on TikTok. And please, if you have any questions, if I was skipping some steps, steps or if, I don't know, something is unclear, please leave a comment and I'm gonna make some more videos or try to explain it to you. And yeah, it was the first time that I was filming a video like this and I totally underestimated how time intensive it was. And I'm also not super comfortable speaking um, in front of the camera. So I really hope once I look back to all those clips, it's not too uncomfortable to watch. Um, but yeah, I would love to hear any kind of feedback. And yeah, I just hope... I remember when I was learning to sew, there were so many amazing YouTube channels that inspired me and that I learned a lot from, so I hope I can teach you something. And I hope I can inspire you. And I just think it's such a nice thing being able to sew your own clothes. And yeah, it's the best feeling when you wear one of your own dresses that you made and someone compliments you and then you can say, oh, I made it. <laughs> so I hope that happens to you, that someone's gonna give you a compliment and you can take the credit for it mm, and I think that's it